Five years. If BuzzFeed liked me, they'd be writing shitty nostalgic lists about me by now. A lot of people, including myself, didn't think a dose of Buckley would last for five months. But five years and nearly 300 pieces of content later, I'm still doing this shit. So, in honor of this little milestone that's ultimately meaningless when compared to the accomplishments of man throughout all of history, I present to you my first three doses, unedited from their original release. When I first started A Dose of Buckley, it was meant as an audio-only project on my website, with only the odd video being posted on YouTube to help promote the website. Of course, once I started getting about 100 views a video versus about 6 plays on my website, that quickly changed. Much of my early work is still not available on YouTube and has probably not been heard by over 90% of my audience, which might be a good thing. The first dose is about a transit strike in my hometown and how much I hate unions. The second is about the magazine Cosmo and the things the media tells us we need to do to be the ideal person for someone else. And the third is about how people are assholes to Walmart greeters. My delivery in these is very monotone and dry, even by my standards, which means the sarcasm in the third one where I talk about how I'm better than everyone else is definitely lost and just makes me sound like a self-important smarmy prick. Again, more so than I already do, but you might find it interesting to see how my work has evolved and improved over the short span of five years while not really changing all that much. These doses include early concepts like the intro voice that was meant to set the tone that this is supposed to be comedy, and the short runtime because I figured people have really short attention spans and wouldn't ever want to listen to me talk for more than a minute and a half at a time. And, to experience them as they were meant to be experienced, I won't be including any slides or visual jokes like I do with my videos now. So everyone, thanks for giving me the motivation to keep doing what I'm doing. Here's your reward. Three shitty old rants. Enjoy. Open your mouth and swallow. It's a dose of Buckley. The London transit strike is entering its fourth week, and of course, like every other modern day strike, the cause isn't something noble like fighting dangerous or unfair working conditions or even long-term job stability. Nope, it's all about an immediate pay increase. To break it down, the greedy unionized drivers want 12% over the next three years and the cheap bastards at the LTC only want to give them 9%. This would bring the average driver's full-time pay to over $25 an hour or $52,000 a year from the 48 grand a year they're already making. Are you fucking kidding? $52,000 to drive a bus. Do you know how many people go to college or university every year and spend the next 10 years of their life hoping they might make a salary like that? You know how much education you need to drive a bus? You go to the fucking drive test place, buy a book and take the bus licensing test. If you learn how to read in elementary school, or you got a friend that'll read it to you, and you can pass the written and driver's test, you're qualified to drive a bus. But these assholes want to be paid nearly as much as a nurse. Yeah, I looked it up. Nurses make about 55 grand to 60 grand a year in their first three or four years on the job. They clean blood and shit up all day and watch cancer patients die. Drivers, you think your job is worth the same? And don't even get me started on unions. Maybe they were necessary in the 50s when people were forced by the owners to work 80 hours a week for a dollar an hour, and if they refused, they were fired. But we got labor laws against that shit now, and an owner of a company can pay his or her employees based on what they feel the job's worth. It's called capitalism. You don't like it? Move to fucking Cuba. See how much they'll pay you to drive a bus there, you greedy fucks. The taste is the least of your worries. It's a dose of Buckley. So, I was recently sent a link to a Cosmo article titled, Crazy Things Women Do For Their Men. The stupid tart that wrote it goes on about the numerous things women feel they need to do in order to keep their man's attention or get a man in the first place. Though I suspect that this woman in particular has to do all these things to make up for the fact that she's got a terrible personality and a despicable job writing garbage. She whines about having to go to spin class, wearing 5 inch heels, wearing the jersey of a sports team that she doesn't care about. Are you shitting me? Men have to do the same garbage, or at least so the media tells us. We're expected to hit the gym to tone up, wear uncomfortable dress shoes when we take you to those places where you would be wearing those 5 inch heels, dress in ridiculously stupid colored shirts. No man should ever wear pink. No man. The media constantly tells both women and men that they need to look better, dress better, women need to have bigger and more shapely breasts, men need to have bigger and harder dicks. There's no double standard, we're all sheep treated the same way by the media. And as for TV, the fat slobs like Fred Flintstone, Homer Simpson, and that dude from King of Queens having hot wives like Wilma, Marge, and the chick from King of Queens before she got fat, 
Well, for many men, that's the North American dream, all right. But the North American reality is two fat people together because they stop giving a shit about what TV is telling them to do. That, or they're too fat now to haul their wide ass off the couch, turn the TV off, and go do the things that media is telling them to do. Just like drinking grandpa's eggnog, you won't feel the same afterwards. It's a dose of Buckley. Well, it's the holiday season, and for me that means far more frequent trips to Walmart, and I hate to go off on a tangent right away, but for all the people that say Walmart is an evil corporation and people shouldn't shop there, you know what I say to those people? Get a job and contribute to society, you filthy fucking hippies. Anyway, I'm at Walmart, and you know what I noticed? People are just out and out dicks to the greeters. You know, the old guys just hanging out, they say hello and goodbye to everyone that walks in or out of the place. So many people just walk by, avoid eye contact, ignore them. Why? I mean, I'm not a sociable guy by nature, which is mostly because I'm superior to others intellectually and feel it beneath me to converse with the common folk, but at least I could say hi to a Walmart greeter. I mean, what reasoning could someone have for not saying hello back? Are you that busy that you can't turn your head and say hey on the way by? Is it because you hold a grudge against a guy whose sole duty it is to just welcome you to a store and watch your shit for you if need be while you go get your car? And I mean, I could even understand that type of behavior if I were in the US, but we're Canadians. We're supposed to be friendly to the point of nauseating Americans. So try it. Next time you're at Walmart, say hello instead of being a miserable prick. Happy holidays, you slack-jawed fucks.